Welcome to the Kendall Report. I'm Bob Kendall. Remember to subscribe, like, and share these videos and hit that notification bell. Well, Tuesday was quite the day as we come into the final two sessions of this quarter. This was uh, pretty amazing. Last night I talked about maybe trading down to an S2 and even coming down into the 38. 20, 28, uh, and we did just that. We actually collapsed. And it was interesting because we started off with this crazy spike up. I did a Twitter Spaces on the open this morning, was talking to many of you, and it was amazing. We just saw this big ramp up right out of the gate, up 1%, and then the selling started to come in, and it didn't stop. And it was really all about consumer confidence. I have not seen... I guess that type of reaction on consumer confidence for a long time. And I, I think I talked a bit about this last night before that number came out, is that the a lot of folks are out there thinking that the consumer's strong. No, they're not. Uh, there was a couple of things in that report. No, it came in at 98.7, it was expected to be 101, but even bigger than that, the previous report was 106 plus, and it they, it was revised down to 103. So it was way, way worse than the 98 number. It was more like 95. That was a pretty big hit. I think the markets probably reacted pretty, maybe overreacted in this scenario. I talked about us, uh, you know, coming down into the market grid last night. I'll go through the details and the technicals here in a few minutes. But we came right into there, and we actually printed just about an STX number, which is the extreme that was projected for the range for Tuesday. So that was uh, pretty important. Uh, just looking at some of my notes here, um, all 10 or 10 of the 11 sectors were negative. Guess which one was positive again? Energy. Energy was up 2.7. For the most part, the mega caps just destroyed the markets. There was all the selling came in to the, the large cap stocks and really mega cap stocks. And, you know, as we come into today, uh, there's a couple of the, uh, I'll go back and I'm still on this concept of what's going on with the yen. I'll go through that and cover that again tonight. Uh, but the, the realities are that there is a lot of cross currents going on in the markets right now. I talked about maybe a, a two day decline and then resumption of the upside, uh, that's coming into question now based on what we're seeing. And the uh, we got up right up into some of the, the key averages that I talked about last night, big rejection, we, we all saw it happen. Uh, so let's talk just a, a little bit more. Tomorrow, uh, the title of this video is Can Paul Save the Market? And the reality is, uh, I don't think so, but he's going to do everything to be as, I would say, dovish or friendly, maybe is a better word. I talked about this last night, that it's not a mistake that GDP 
final re revision is coming out, and Paul is speaking that same day. This is not by accident. This was scheduled, obviously, and it's just everything is orchestrated that we're seeing right now. So the third division, uh, revision of the GDP is expected to be in at one, minus 1 1.5. I think that could be re revised down. I talked about that in last night's video. I still believe that's the possibility. The deflator is also coming out. It's expected to be at 8.1. Maybe that comes in hotter. Who knows? It's all about inflation right now. And it just won't go away. That story's not going anywhere. Just looking at my uh, notes, I just do want, want to say, once again, the yen is a big deal. And there's a lot of, I, as I've said, probably over the last four or five weeks, I've been talking about this yen situation. And I continue to believe that there is something there that could trigger a rollover, whether we can get some uh, traction and save this market tomorrow. For the most part, we're still in this massive downtrend on an intermediate basis. So anything that we see right now is really kind of a contra trend or maybe a bear market rally that a lot of people are talking about. But we're going to end this quarter on Thursday's close. So I'll zero in on that in tomorrow's video, exactly what I'm expecting there. But we're this is a, a probably one of the worst setups that I've seen for a long time as far as a continuation goes. My expectations, as, a, as you'll see in a few minutes, I go through the technicals, is still for the markets to hold these support levels and see a little bit of recovery. But I think it's going to be up to uh, Mr. Powell tomorrow. So let's go ahead and take a look at the WaveTech database and see exactly what that's telling us. I think that you'll find that interesting as well. As we look at the database, we've actually ticked up again. We're at 41.6. Yesterday, we were at 40.78, so not a lot of increase, but we did see a net buying here on the, on the markets. We saw 509 buys versus 209 sells, and there's right now 6,721 long in, in the markets, there's only, as I, as I look at the sectors, we actually have had uh, healthcare and technology rotate in, in in the last couple of days. I didn't discuss that last night, but let me bring that up on the screen so you can see that in the side window. You'll see here that the there's two sectors long. They're both negative by 2%. So... The, the buy signals aren't doing much. The typical holding period on these are 47 days. So we're not really expecting much from this, but the there is healthcare and technology got, got a buy, and it's interesting that those are the two sectors that got the buy. We still haven't seen the energy from an index standpoint, and these indexes that are in WaveTech are a custom index. They're a non-weighted index, and so they're equal weighted across the board. So I built these especially for to not have this weighted strategy like we see in a lot of the a lot of the indexes. Let's go ahead and get into the technicals and see what's going on here. Okay, the first market that will look at is the s p yesterday as i mentioned you look at the market grid that's up here this is yesterday's grid we traded down stx 3815 the low is 21. we went right through 59 it looked like s2 was going to hold and then we broke through that 3836 was the next level there was nothing there it was just relentless selling the algorithms were big time selling this all the way down and then we Printed, like I said, just short of the STX number. And now we're seeing a slight rebound, really wouldn't call it a rebound. We're up three. So far, we have been up about 38.34 is the high. 38.21 is, is the low for the session. So pretty, pretty.
pretty minor session. So as we look at the expectations, we look at the market grid for Wednesday. S1 is 3,800. I do expect that to hold probably S1, S2, be 3,879 would be the range. If we take out 3,800, then 3,771 to start to be uh, pretty familiar numbers. There's a, a pivot number down at 3,739, which is uh, the uh, a key number to watch out for. I don't think we get down that low. I think we come in, probably hold around 3,800. We'll see what kind of activity we get overnight. Every, everything's going to be coming in probably around GDP and so, some of those uh, th those numbers that are coming out. You know, yesterday we, we had uh, not only consumer uh, confidence, but we had the real estate numbers come out. And Case Shower was up 21.2. There were really no surprises there. Everybody was focused on this consumer confidence number and the revisions. And all of a sudden, like I said earlier, we're seeing – that the markets are realizing that the consumer is not going to save the market. You know, that's a big piece of the U.S. economy, always has been. And so we're seeing that the entire complex is starting to melt down here. And there's not, I guess what we're looking at is probably this decline that we started this year. I mean, here we are, you know, uh, completing June coming into July, and there's been no traction. For the most part, we're trading within a, a few percent of the low of the year, and there doesn't appear to be any bounce. And I'm starting to feel even more and more. There's a couple of things that I'll just break in and talk about here. I'm starting to feel more and more that there's a lot of systemic issues coming into the markets. I think there's a permanent inflation that's embedded in into these markets now. Uh, I was talking about this on the Twitter spaces, is that what happened is once you raise somebody's salary, you can't bring it down again, right? You can lay off people, but you can't lower the salaries. It's one of those things that it's a little difficult to justify. I got a raise and now you're going to take the raise away. And to do it across the board is not likely. So there's a lot of things, not just the wages, but there's a ton of things that are getting embedded permanently into the system. And I don't think they're going to go away. So the whole expectation of the market's inflation rates peaking maybe is the case, but the level that it's going to come back to is going to be very, very high. And I think it's going to stay well above 6%, no matter what happens here. So this is going to be an issue for sure. So, but the technicals here are, are interesting because if we look at the PPMs here on the page, we go ahead and take a look at the PPMs. What we're looking at here is PPM1 is actually in trend mode up. So that number is right here at 37.94 is the 10 period moving average. We've got a 0.23 PPM1, which suggests we should be able to hold this value. There's about a 60% probability that we'll stay above that value. And then we should start to head back to, toward this 21 and 40 period moving averages. I mentioned these numbers and yesterday, we look at 30, 39.70, 39.17, I, I tweeted out earlier on the open this morning that watch out for a rejection around 39.29, but we traded all the way all the way through this. And matter of fact, we traded up to 39.50, which was somewhat equal to uh, we made a slightly higher high than the, on 6.27. We had a 39.48. We made a new high by two two points, and then it just collapsed as I talked about earlier, as I'm sure most of you watched. So we're right back into support where the two things line up really good. The S1 number is at 3,800. We have the 10 period moving average, 37.94. It's got a PPM value of 0.24. So this, this is positive as well. So we should have a pretty 
decent probability of holding this area right now. So watch that area really closely as we come into tomorrow. Next market I'll cover is the NASDAQ. And NASDAQ is still very similar. Every night when we talk about this, there's a lot of common stocks in these two indexes. So there's a reason they look similar. But we are seeing the PPM2 actually down to minus 0.41. It actually just declined substantially. PPM1 is positive, just like with the, the S&P and the 10 period movement average 11,649 low so far has been 11,657 so we're trading 79 so we're just coming off of those that support level and we should hold that the same as with the S&P i just don't see any of the uh, the probabilities are stacked for us to hold support maybe trade back in but this PPM2 is an issue so if that continues to accelerate, then we could see maybe a one or two day bounce at best back into that 12,000 level and then another rejection from that level. It doesn't look very positive. The only other thing that looks a little positive is that PPM3 is up above its uh, first and second derivative, which, which is positive. We're looking, but we're still in a trend mode down. So that area around that 21 and 40 day moving averages, 12,006, 12,172, those are gonna be substantial and it's going to be difficult to get through those levels at this time. Next market I'll cover is the Russell the Russell was relatively stronger. This is the RTY, so this is the futures. And so far, we're seeing a, a similar configuration where the PPMs are not quite as strong on PPM1. It's at a 0.18, so not quite in trend mode. Anything above 0.25 or is trend mode. Minus 0.39 and minus 0.19 on the PPM2 and 3. But this configuration is very similar. I talked a little bit about the potential for this to, to move up. I still don't have a tool to, to draw in the uh, patterns for you, but I, still, I think this is going to represent a right shoulder in this pattern, and we should move up into these Fibonacci sequences from these levels. So this will be the case on all three of the indexes so if you have the indicators, you'll know exactly if you have the WaveTech FIB projection tool, you'll have these numbers on your screen. But these are, are key numbers above the market that are still targeted. They're still value, uh, uh, validated targets. Nothing has invalidated, invalidated them. In fact, it looks to me that we're setting up just the right shoulder. So those of you that looked at, you know, like an Edwards and McGee cup and handle, whatever you want to call it, but the right shoulder, we should get a classic pattern that I talk about in our live room all the time is this one, two, three, or an ABC pattern. And the, this numbers up here are the minimum projections for that pattern. Next, we'll look at the treasuries, and the treasuries continue to move a little higher, but we're going into that range that I talked about last night. That range is moving up toward the 10 period moving average, 324. We're at 320. The high yesterday was 3.25, so we traded right into that. Rejected a little bit off of there. I expect that we'll stay sandwiched between the 21 period moving average here, 3.11 to 3.25. We'll round out the numbers. We'll call it 312 to 325. We should stay in those, those ranges. Now, if we look at the PPMs, we're seeing PPM1 is actually accelerating. It's a minus 0.49. So 
So the probabilities are about 60% that we will stay below this 3.25 number. And as far as the other indicators go, PPM2 is still strong. So that's why I'm looking at that downward pressure off of the 10 and the upward pressure on the 21 will stay pretty much sandwiched in that area. Real quick, we'll take a look at the weekly. And I've been talking about this as well, that peak that we had up at 3.48, so three and a half was the peak. And now I think we're just going to set up a sideways range. We're looking at a three, three point, we'll call it 3.2% as a floor in this market right now. And on the upside, like I said, the 325 should be it. We also have R2 on a weekly right at 3.26. So there's a clustering of numbers there that are likely to, to hold this market at this stage. Uh, real quick, I'll, I'll put this I'll put this up here real quick just on the screen. But we're seeing just the yield curve stable. We did see a little bit of steepening in the shorter end of the curve, but the 1030s and the 530s really just are stable here. There's still positive uh, 1030s at 10 basis points and the 530s at around five basis points. So we're no longer inverted. So that's actually a good sign, I think, from a, from the viewpoint of that. Uh, let me just uh, take just a minute here and um, I, I said I was going to cover the yen. I don't have uh, the yen available on a screen at the moment. Let me just see if I can get over there real quick. And let me put that up. Bear with me. I usually have these all set up. And I just want to put this uh, this number here. Let's go to the weekly so you can see that this is what we're looking at. This is a little spread out. Let me just go here. So you can see uh, the yen is at. See if I can make this a little larger for you folks. The, the yen is at right now the 136.07. I'm still watching this mark here at the 137 level. That's going to be a trigger, and I think it's not going to happen at the moment. The momentum here on this is a weekly chart is substantial, and that's going to keep the underline there. But that trigger at 137 should move the yen to about 142. If you're looking at the uh, yen and, and inverse of this, it'd probably be around 71 possibility of challenging 70 if we get through this level. But th this is uh, significant, as I've been talking about. I think this could force the, uh, the BOJ uh, to be more aggressive about supporting the, the yen and even buying more of the JGBs and this is going to be an issue potentially for the treasuries. But just look, tying this together with the treasury analysis I just did, it doesn't look like at the moment this is going to trigger. So I expect just more consolidation here. But this is something to watch because sometimes you'll get an outside event to happen like this. And all of a sudden, the, the treasuries will get, get hammered and there'll be a lot of selling into that market. Next market we'll look at is crude oil, and crude continues to hover above these numbers I've been talking about. It's been around 110 plus. So far this week, we had a low of 105, but for, on average, we've been staying above 110. And I've been talking about this, if we just look at the market grid, 
we're trading right at around this R2 level and S1 was 105.20. So we had a low of 105.60 so far this week, which is right on that S1 level and then R2 12.75. So we are so far printing an S1 R2 on the weekly grid and the PPMs are are still very positive. So the primary driver, and I talk about this pattern over and over again, is that rising 10 pattern that happens inside of the market grid. That's at 109.29. That's going to be probably your lower end of the band. Maybe we trade down to just below that 108.50, something like that. But we should see this market just maintain this upward slope. And like I said, the as long as the market stays above around 95 even uh, these energy stocks should start to do a little better they're going to continue to be somewhat robust maybe tomorrow night i'll bring up the xle hack and we'll take a look and see what kind of traction is happening on the short term because we have seen a decent bounce in some of these stocks Next market I'll cover is gold. Gold continues just to be lackluster. We're at 12, 1823. So far, we've continued to hold that 1817 was the, the low. I talked about the cycle low, and this is in place. We're starting to see uh, PPM. This is weekly. PPM one is trying to turn up. It's still very negative at a minus 0.63. I think if we can stay stable this week, next week, we could start to see these PPMs all starting to turn up and maybe get some traction off of this cycle. We have Fibonacci projections, which are interesting for a 2000 number. That's a big rally. That's a couple hundred bucks here. I don't see that happening at the moment, but I think if we can get back above the 1850 level is going to be the minimum that I expect to see here right now. And I talked a little bit about this last night. Is that uh, gold appears to be just range bound. And we've been range bound. If you look at this chart, it's really sloppy. We could go all the way back through 21 and it just up and down uh, in a sideways range. And we're still within that same value range that gold has been in. So, uh, like I said, we're. Starting to see some interesting numbers. FIB projection tool is suggesting that we could go up to a 2000 number, but the PPMs are not yet signaling that. But it looks like, if, like I said, if we hold these ranges, we could see some stabilization and maybe see next week that the PPMs are starting to indicate that we could start to move higher in this pattern. Final market I'll cover tonight is Bitcoin. Bitcoin continues to be under the 200 week moving average. I think this is significant. That number is at 22,482. We're sitting here printing 2320. And there's still some downward risk. If you look at the PPMs, they're huge downward pressure, minus 6.31. That's uh, and anything under 0.5. So that's like multiples of a downward pressure that's very substantial and looking at ppm 2 minus 2.99 and 1.37 so what's happening that angle of attack that i talk about is going to keep this market under pressure for a while and just looking at the uh, correlations to the, the market maybe we get a little stability here if the scenario i'm talking about we can get some strengthen the markets and the equity markets because there's been big correlation between the NASDAQ and Bitcoin, but it's kind of been breaking loose lately, but there's just a ton of risk in this market here yet. And uh, let me bring up the daily and I'll go back full screen so you can see this. Is there are some downward projections that continue to 
to be out there. We're looking at 15,767 15, and 12,935. Those are FIB projections. Doesn't mean they're going to go there. Uh, PPMs on a daily basis have stabilized here. So you're looking at PPM1 is flat, but there's just absolutely no, as I always say, the, the term, no VIG in this market. So it's just been in a sideways range. In fact, I'm going to blow this up so you can see this has just really been This has really just been flat, and we're just hovering along this 10-peri moving average here. There's just nothing there at all. And these down, the PPM2, the 21, and the 40-peri moving average have a decent angle of attack. So, I mean, if you did see 23.7, that would be a miracle right now in, in this pattern. You can see how the market grid is just flattened. It's gotten very narrow, and typically... When you see that type of narrowing of a market grid, it tells you there's about to be a big move to happen. It doesn't really tell you which direction PPM1 is turning up, but this downward pressure on the weekly is over uh, very dominant in, in the pattern. Folks, that'll do the broadcast for tonight. Appreciate you watching. Uh, those of you in our live room, We'll see you tomorrow at 1 o'clock. And remember, if you get the indicators, the link is on the top of the page. If you get these indicators, you get to join into the live room for a month and participate in there. So there's a lot of education, trade setups, all kinds of things that we do. So hopefully we'll see you there. And I will talk to you at, in the live room. And tomorrow night, I will see you at the same time here in on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share these videos and hit the notification bell so that YouTube knows, hey, listen, these are free videos. Just hit that like button. Thanks a lot. Have a great evening and a good, good day trading tomorrow, everyone.